Today I'm gonna introduce you to Gunjongjeon, and this is my first video. And Gunjongjeon is where the king held official ceremonies, and where and it is it says main office. And Gunjongjeon itself means to diligently rule the country. So yeah, it was the king's king's office. And in Gunjongjeon, in front of Gunjongjeon, there's a big yard called Gunjongjeon Dojong, and <clears throat> in that place. Uh, the servants would stand while the king held morning assemblies, and stones called orgesok indicate where the servants should stand. And the higher you are in rank, the closer you get to stand, the closer to the king you get to stand. So yeah, that's one thing to know. And inside Kunjongjeon, there's a there are a lot of dragons, dragon pictures, dragon figures. And this is because in the Eastern Hemisphere, dragon symbolizes the king and the power. So, yeah. And well, you can see a lot of dragons in most of the palaces in Korea and in China too. And, uh, oh, behind the king's chair is a picture called Ilwar Obongdo. And in that picture, there are also several dragons. And in the ceiling, there is a dragon figure called a uh, figure with seven claws, and that figure also symbolizes the king. But it not only symbolizes the king, but also symbolizes that the will of Joseon Dynasty to be an independent nation, not a servant nation of China. And yeah, back then Joseon Dynasty was almost a servant country of China. And it had to make um, give gifts and birthday presents to the China to China to China's emperor whenever he was, he had a birthday. He hit whenever it was his birthday. And back then there were not many sophisticated transportations, so the servants would carry all the gifts to way to China. And yeah. It's, it was pretty a hard job, so yeah. The dragon not only symbolizes the king, but also symbolizes that Joseon Dynasty was an independent nation from China, ra rather than a servant nation of China. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.